Hello everyone, my name is Afonso Fernandes and I will be presenting this talk on verification and visualization of a consensus algorithm using Teleplus. The work I will be presenting was done during my master thesis at the University of Porto in Portugal. First, I will talk about where this thesis team came from. The initial thesis team was present in distributed storage, where the goal was to prototype a distributed storage solution that could tolerate Byzantine failures. The idea was to do it on top of Ceph, which is a well-known distributed storage solution that is open source and can tolerate crash type failures. The idea was to change how the Ceph works so it could also tolerate Byzantine failures. The first step was to research about distributed systems and Ceph. I found out that Ceph uses a consensus algorithm that is based on Paxos. They mentioned some deviations from the original algorithm and the main documentation of the algorithm was in the source code comments. Then, my next step was to research about distributed consensus. For that, one of the main resources I used was the TL Plus video course, where Lady Samport explains the TL Plus language, and one of the examples he gives is for the Paxos algorithm. I found out having a specification helps in understanding the algorithm, as it gives clarity of the action that the algorithm can take, and also gives a way of exploring executions of the algorithm using the model shaker. You can see how the value of the variables can change and how that values impact on the decisions the algorithm can take. So, as I found the idea very interesting, I proposed a new team to my supervisor of formal verification of the self consensus algorithm, where I will develop a specification for the implementation they have of a consensus algorithm. And the main objectives will be to have a better documentation of how the algorithm works, do safety verification of the consensus algorithm that was implemented because they mentioned some deviations from the original algorithm, and having a new way, and in my opinion, an easier way of testing other versions of the algorithm, for example, a version where Ceph can also tolerate Byzantine failures. In this presentation, I'll start by presenting some background on what is the problem of distributed consensus and uh, I'll explain briefly how the Paxos algorithm works. Then I'll be presenting briefly how Ceph works and the specification that was developed for the consensus algorithm that is implemented. Then I'll present the visualization tool that was developed alongside the specification to help understand and explore the algorithm. Then I'll presenting some results on the performance of the specification and on the performance of the visualization tool and I will end by presenting some ideas for future work. So, what is the problem of distributed consensus? Distributed consensus can be defined as a problem of multiple nodes agreeing on a sequence of values. Normally, this is the definition of the general consensus problem and there is also a single value consensus problem. In single value consensus, we only require that uh, the nodes agree on a single value. Then the general consensus can be obtained by multiple executions of the single body consensus. So if we can solve the single body consensus, we can solve the general consensus problem. Some important properties of the single body consensus. The chosen value must be a value from the set of proposed values. Only a single value must be chosen. And the correct node will only learn that a value was chosen if it actually has been chosen. One of the main algorithms to solve the consensus problem is called Paxos. Paxos is an algorithm that is crash fault tolerance and I will first present the algorithm to solve the single value consensus and then multi Paxos to solve the general consensus problem. So Paxos works in a series of rounds. In each round there is a node that is elected as a leader and you will try to propose a value and the rest of the nodes in the system will vote on that value and uh, if a majority of nodes vote on that value, the value is chosen. So normally it's divided in two phases. The first phase is a sinking or recovering phase and the second phase is a committing phase. In the first phase, the leader starts by announcing a new round. This round has an identifier that is called ballot number and is represented by the variable B. Then the rest of the nodes of the system will reply with information about previous rounds. So if the leader was down in the previous round or it crashes, it has information about previous rounds. In the second phase, the leader will, using the information he received from his peers, he'll choose a new value to be proposed. That value can be a value from previous rounds, if there was values proposed or chosen, 
or it can be a new value from the set of possible values. If a majority of nodes in the system agree on that value, that value is chosen. The value can be chosen in multiple rounds, however, if two rounds have a chosen value, that value must be the same. Then multipaxus, there is a new variable here, call it s, that will represent the slot in the sequence of values that uh, the nodes will be agreeing on. Here we also have uh, two executions of the second phase occurring uh, one after the other to represent that the phase one only needs to occur once per round and then the leader can propose multiple times for example here the leader thinks and uh, changes information with his peers then he can pr for example propose a new value for the slot one of the sequence and then propose a new value for the slot two now I will briefly talk about Ceph and present the specification that was developed for the consensus algorithm. So as I talked before, Ceph is a distributed storage solution. That means that you can have multiple systems with storage and Ceph unifies those systems so you can deliver a unified solution that can use all that storage. Here we have a simple diagram of the various components in Ceph. I will mostly focus on these ones below. So you have object storage devices that are the components that will have the storage, such as hard drives or SSDs. Then the metadata server that will store metadata. The managers that will be possible for monitoring the cluster. And you have monitors that are the main components on the context of this talk. The monitors will be responsible for maintaining a series of maps and to keep track of the changes of these maps, they use Paxos. So you have a, a sequence of changes that can be committed and to know which changes to commit in each slot, they use the uh, algorithm that is based on Paxos. For example, the monitor map will have information about which monitors are up and which monitors are down. These maps are important because Ceph uses an algorithm that is called Crush and this Crush algorithm uses these maps to locate where the files are in the cluster. For uh, the consensus algorithm, you can see here above the algorithm that is on safe and below the Paxos algorithm for comparison. The names of the phases are changes, but we can map the phases simply. So the operation collect and operation last can be mapped to the phase one, and when operation begin, accept and commit can be mapped to phase two. The implementation is safe for multi Paxos, so we have also a slot variable. And it's not called slot, but it can be a map slot variable. Also here in Ceph, the phase 2b is separated into phases, operation accept and operation commit. So there is no need for the peers to broadcast their votes. The leader is responsible for counting the votes and then transmitting that information to the nodes in the system. There is also a list phase not represented in this diagram. And this list phase has two goals. The first one, to work as an R tweet, so the leader can know which servers are up and which servers are down, and also uh, works as a mechanism for the clients to know when it's safe to read a value from a, a monitor and when it's not. For example, at the beginning of uh, an around, the monitors will be in a recovering state, so it is not safe to read a value. When the, the recovering phase ends, the monitors will enter an active state. In this active state, the monitors are safe to read the value that is there. And then, when a committing state starts, the monitors enter a committing state, and they are marked as not safe to read the value. And when the committing phase ends, the monitors are again marked as an uh, state active by this list phase, and they are again safe to read the values that they have. Now I'll start talking about the specification. So before writing it, what I did was analyze the implementation and identify what mechanisms I need to abstract and for those mechanisms, what were the properties that I would need to maintain so I don't find bugs in the specification that are not mapped to real bugs in the implementation. So for example, the communication mechanism. In the implementation, they have a complex mechanism based on TCP protocol However, in the specification, it didn't make sense to model it in the entirety. So there is a simplified mechanism in the specification that has no message duplication. The messages are delivered in order for a given connection. And the messages are only discarded when a new election period starts. 
so an epoch is an election period. For the election logic, there is only one leader elected per epoch, and the quorum in the election will be formed with all available monitors, all the monitors that are not Karachi. For the failure model, I have two options to do it implicit by letting the model checker find the behaviors where the monitors don't respond, or doing it explicit by having a variable that keeps track of which monitors are down and which monitors are online. I chose the second option, so I have a variable that keeps track of which monitors are available and which monitors are down. And when a monitor crashes or recovers, that triggers immediately a new election. Finally, for the transactions, this is uh, which changes of variables are committed in each slot of the sequence of changes. In the implementation, a transaction can have a set of changes to multiple variables. However, in the specification, a monitor only keeps track of a single variable, so a transaction will only have a chance to that variable. And the values in the implementation can be requested to any monitor, and if that monitor is not a leader, it will forward to the leader. However, in the specification, a change can only be requested to the current leader of the epoch. Uh, before I show the specification, I'll just give a little overview of the various sections that are present in the specification. So, at the beginning, we have declaration of constants and variables, some initial uh, definitions for variable initialization, methods manipulation definitions, helpers, then the main algorithm separated by the list phase, the commit phase, collect phase, and uh, also the client requests, the leader election, then definition for crash and recover, the dispatchers and the next statement, and at the end, also have safety properties that are called invariants. The specification is open source on this uh, URL for my GitHub. I'll go now go over there. So in the GitHub we have these files. Uh, the main file for the specification is here in the source folder. Here in the source folder I have the configuration, the PDF and the main specification for TLA. So in the configuration, we have here declaration of the set of monitors, the set of values, then the names for the type of message, the state name and names for the each phase. These names here are the same as in the implementation. These are extra variables I added for specifying more easily the algorithm. Then in the TLA, I will like to first take attention to these types. I had a type annotations using the syntax of the Appalach type checker. These type annotations can be checked using the type checker, but the main reason I had them is to have a better readability of the meaning of each variable. For example, here in this variable, pending pn, we can see easily that this variable will track the proposal number for each monitor and not, for example, a global a proposal number. So this variable is a function from monitors to proposal numbers. This proposal number is the identifier of the run, so it's the valid number from the Paxos algorithm. This value version is the slot in the sequence of changes, so it can be up to the that slot variable I have in the diagram. Then the value is the value that will be changed. This monitor store is a variable that the monitors keep track of and the values is the sequence of changes that will be made to the, this variable. Then going a little below, we have here the definitions to exchange the message. As I said before, the messages are modeled with some similarity to a TCP protocol where we have connections from two monitors and to add a message will add the message to the end of the a connection. To remove a message, as the messages are handled in order, we remove the message that is in the front. Here below we have some helper definitions. I'd like to point out this get a new proposal number definition that was used to compute the ballot number or proposal number of uh, a round. So the one that is used in the implementation is this one above, where they use the rank of the monitor. This is basically identifier. For example, for the monitor 1, is the rank of monitor will be 1. For monitor 2, the rank of monitor will be 2. 
So, however, this definition makes the monitor set not symmetric and that has uh, many co consequences on the performance of this specification. So I change it to use the epoch variable instead of the rank of the monitor. To find that this was a definition that was breaking the symmetry was also a little hard. This specification is open source, so you can go a little deeper. Uh, afterwards, I would like uh, only to point out one or more two things. So here we have the leader election, here the crash and restore uh, definitions to crash a monitor and restore a monitor. A monitor will only be crashed if there are enough monitors left to form a quorum. And uh, there is this research search space to limit the number of states that are explored in the model shaker. So here we use the epoch to limit the number of elections, the last commit to limit the number of commits of variables that are changed, and the SFPN to limit the number of rounds. The safety properties that were defined in this work are these two, they are like with each other. So up here we have the same monitor store uh, that states that when two monitors are in this state active, then the value of the variable they are keeping track with must be the same. So when they are in this state active is when a uh, client can read the, the variable from the monitors. And that variable must be the same. The other safety property is this one below that states that for each slot, so the version will be the slot, then there is a value where all monitors that have committed uh, for that slot must have the same value committed. After defining these two safety properties, what I did was checking the specification to see if I could find any bug, and sorry short, I didn't find any. So what I did was introduce a bug in the specification. The bug I chose to introduce was this one, where the proposal number of the of the proposal that is being made is not safe. So when the monitor goes down and the leader tries to sync and recover information from previous rounds, you only have the version that was being committed and the value, and you will not have the ballot number of uh, that previous proposal. This bug was a bug that was present in the real implementation many years ago. I'll go over that now. So this is the commit that fixed that bug. It was before version 1.0, so very early version of uh, Ceph. And if you introduce this, so you change these two lines in the specification and run in the TLC, we obtain an uh, error. So this took uh, around 50 seconds, 43 seconds, and produce an error trace of size 37. So it took 37 states to reach a state where there is a monitor. So we have here a monitor that has two values committed and they are different. So for monitor one, it committed V1 and monitor two, committed v2. As you can see here is a little difficult to understand what is happening as there are too many states and each state has too much information. So I now switch to the the visualization tool I created to help understand these trace errors and also the main reason I, I created was for this kind of export but for now I use it for the trace explorer. So I already selected the error trace and if I submit it, I have this, this interface with the current state and the next state. So you can go over the states and as you can see, the leader is elected and he proposed the V1. Then the monitor one crashes and we go to monitor two is elected as a leader and he will propose and commit the value to. Then the monitor 2 will crash and the monitor 1 will be elected as a leader and you will now have to choose between proposing v1 and pro or proposing the value 2, proposing value 1 or value 2. As it doesn't have information of when those values were proposed, it only has information about for which slot and what was the value, it cannot choose between those two and is in 
he ends up choosing V1, which will violate the safety property, as you can see here. Now I will present in more detail the visualization tool. So the main motivation to create the visualization tool was uh, at the beginning I wanted to make the monitor set symmetric and that was not happening. And the way I found out that it was not happening is because of multiple executions of the model shaker were giving me different numbers of uh, uh, distinct states that were being explored. So with model shaker I could uh, I extract the state graph and different discussions were giving me different state graphs. So there were behaviors that were being explored in one state graph and not in the other and that the main reason for that was the symmetry that was being defined. And I had to find those behaviors and compare and try to understand why those behaviors were happening. To explore those state graphs. I didn't find any tool to help me do that. The state graphs were very large, hard to open in my computer, and each state in state graph also had too much information. So I developed a simple tool that can be open in a browser to explore these state graphs and see what the behaviors that are happening in these state graphs. Later on, I also had the uh, support for trace errors as you see me use it before so this will can be used with the, the dot format and the trace error format from the TLC model checker and the states can be personalized using JavaScript, HTML and CSS and to help doing those personalization there is a parser that translates a TLA expression to a JavaScript object so the information in the state can be more easily assessed and used in the JavaScript. The visualization tool is open source and can be found on this URL. So if you go to the URL, you have here the repo where this visualization tool is. And here in the examples, we have the various examples here of how to use the visualization tool. This is the default configuration without any personalization of the the states. It uh, only prints the printed printed version of uh, each state. And here with some graphics. So if you open that example, you have here three files that need to be changed. This first file is for the structure, so it can be mapped to the HTML and it's and HTML, so you can see here there is w the West Iceland, the block of water, the East Iceland, and then the printed print version. And here below we have the template for an Iceland, where we have the boat, and the boat is composed of a sail and a base, and then the text field with the number of missionaries and the number of cannibals. So if you open it again, you can see. Here, the island, the block of water, the island, and the boat that is composed of two components, and each island has two uh, test fields. Then there is the CSS for personalization, and colors, and uh, uh, shapes, and uh, JavaScript to fill the information with the information that comes from the state variables. So the variables are parsed using this function, and then here below you count the the number of cannibals and the number of missionaries so if you go to the dot you can see that the, the variable that is in the trace file is this one so we have to count the number of C's and the number of M M's to know the number of cannibals and the number of missionaries now I'll change to a little demo of the example tool. So I already selected the dot file and I will open. So you can here below also change the name of the next state that can be used. So if you open your self consistence source and JavaScript, you can change the state identifier. There is also a function to change that. And here the state identifier is in the variable called step name. So we can 
uh, go a little bit, choose which state is happening, crash, as you can see here, you can restore, now there is options only to two of the monitors, this is because two of them are equal and we are using a symmetric set for the set of the monitors, so only two options of uh, electing a leader, and you can elect a leader, here we can go not, cannot go further because that is the reducer space definition that limits the number of states that are explored. So here we reach a limit. This is also because I couldn't upload files that were too large. So I put a simpler example. And we can go to previous uh, states and explore the state graph in this way. And that is it. Now I'll be presenting some performance results both on specification and on visualization tool. So here we have the number of states that are generated compared to the maximum epoch or the limit number of elections. As we can see the number of states grows exponentially as expected and I add a graph for various limits that are used. Here the number of rounds that can happen the number of committed values and the number of monitors. You can see that some uh, variables have more impact than others in the number of states and in all of them the growth is exponential. Then for the performance of the visualization tool, here I am analyzing the yeah. amount of memory that the tool is using. Uh, this is because at the beginning uh, the tool was developed mainly to compare some state graphs and those state graphs were a little large so I needed to develop a tool that wouldn't load the entire file into memory so for me to not go out of memory in the computer. So the tool is using a around 10% of the entire file size. You have it comparing for a file with 500 megabytes, 1 gigabyte, 5 gigabytes and 11 gigabytes and uh, it is more or less stable of uh, the use of around 10% of the entire file size into memory. To finish the presentation, I'll now present some future work ideas. So first, the idea to specify and test other versions of the consensus algorithm using as base the specification that was developed. I have also here the idea of rewriting the Explorer tool in TLA Plus. So to do that, I have here some ideas. First, to create a state print model that takes, for example, the variables of the current state and uh, a template file that can be a template for HTML and fills the template with the variables and uh, prints out to a file with the name that you can give. And this state print mo function can be called anywhere inside your specification so it's easier to use and easier to manipulate so you can call it only when certain conditions met. Then w the files that are produced can be explored for example using a tool that can render multiple HTML files to be easier to explore them. I also have here a model to interactively explore the specification. I don't know how possible this is to do but uh, basically the idea would be to change out the behavior of the model checker so the model checker explores the states that you give them and for example you give the user the option to choose the next state from the possible next states and uh, change the model checker to explore only that state and then ask again and also give the option to go backwards and uh, change the current state to a previous current state. I don't know how possible this is, it's an idea that I will try to explore later on. And if you want to reach out to me or contact me, you can do it on LinkedIn. And if you want to see my process, you can do it on GitHub. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy the talk. Okay, so we have a couple of questions here. Um, first question, what was the effect of utilizing s uh, symmetry during model checking? Define in specification files, for example, how quickly the number of states grows as the parameters of the specification increase. Uh, basically, it uh, improved a lot the uh, runtime of the TLC. 
and uh, but it also depends on the number of uh, of the size of the set I was using. But it, uh, for example, there were runs that took an, an hour without symmetric and uh, run in a couple of minutes in with a symmetric set, less than ten. All right. That uh, I didn't. Sorry? That's for the other thing of the parameters. Uh, I didn't test uh, comparing with and without symmetric set uh, how the parameters grow. Awesome. Um, second question: Did you test your specification while writing it, for example, by exploring behaviors, or did you first complete the spec and then explore and analyze it? Uh, I did. Uh, was running the specification while writing it, and I found some bugs I was doing. For example, I have the, the properties uh, defined earlier here on the specification the, when. The, I found some bug. I will uh, try to understand it many times was, and all of the times because I didn't find any bug in the real implementation was because I was not implementing the specification right and was not in doing what was in the implementation. I believe we have a follow-up question over here. Uh, hi. Um, I had a question about uh, variants of Ceph that use more than four monitors. Have you ever tested uh, var variants of the algorithm that use five or more monitors, and as the number of monitors increase, how helpful is the use of Apalache over, over TLC? I did try to use Apalache, however, Apalache ran uh, very slow with, with uh, this specification. I didn't understand why. And uh, uh, with TLC, it was much faster running uh, the specification. Uh, with more than three monitors, uh, so I, I uh, showing one of the graphs, the states explode, the number of states explodes, and it uh, turns very slow. Cool. All right. Um, this one is a little bit of a long question, so we'll ask it in two parts. Um, have you considered Will Schultz Animator? Um, do you find it easier to create designs and layouts in JavaScript than in TLA? Okay, so I did uh, uh, see the the model of, uh, I think, the Will Shows is the SVG, if I'm not wrong. And uh, I, I, for from the first uh, motivation I used the tool was to explore graphs, and I think that was not helpful for that. Uh, for traces, it could be easier to do it in SVG, I don't know. I found, I'm a little biased, but I found it easier to do it with HTML and JavaScript. I found it easier to do, but I didn't uh, really uh, do it with uh, the SVG TLA uh, model because uh, it was for traces, and at the time I already had the tool to develop it, so I used it while. Um, does the visualization tool have a relative layout, uh, such as this box is north of the other circle? Uh, no, it's only uh, raw HTML and JavaScript. You have to do it uh, in the manual way. Gotcha. Using, uh, oh, please, yes. cool. Sorry. Um, and last question about this. Have you talked to Matthias uh, Grunman? I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, about whether you can continue your visualization efforts. Uh, I don't know who is Matthias Grunman, so yeah. Maybe gotcha. some follow-up. Awesome. Um, this one is about the Apalachi type annotations. Um, I think you kind of hit, hit on oh, this one a, a little bit. Uh, how did Apalachi and TLC compare for your spec? Uh, I, sorry, for in the previous question, I didn't correlate but I was the one who did. I didn't talk with him for his visualization tool. Uh, for the uh, next question, in Apalachia, it was a lot slower. I didn't understand why, and TLC was much faster uh, checking the model. Mm -hmm. um, OK. I think you, you touched upon this already a little bit, but have you found bugs in Ceph? Uh, if yes, has the implementation been fixed? Um, and if not, what is the correctness baseline of Ceph? Has Ceph been previously formally verified? So uh, the bugs, uh, 
from what I tested, I didn't find any in the implementation. What I did was uh, to check if the, the specification was done right. I introduced a bug uh, in the specification. It was a real bug that was previously implemented in Ceph, however, in the alpha version of Ceph. And uh, the specification was able to catch that bug. Uh, from what I know, I don't think Ceph has been that component of Ceph has not been formally verified, and if that is being is in closed source, I didn't find on that. Mm -hmm. right, and last question. Uh, future work, have you looked at how traces get formatted in JSON uh, sounds related to the state print module you describe? Hmm. I didn't look. I saw the pull request to do that uh, the not pull request to the issues that were created to uh, add that functionality to TLC, but I didn't. I don't know. Didn't know if it was already or not. Okay. I guess these are all the chat questions. Unless there are more questions, I think we thank Afonso again. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the talk.